So, it's come to my attention that, after I posted the video fanboying over the Eberron supplement that Wizards put out, some of you voiced your concerns that you don't even know what an Eberron is! And that is a crying shame, so I'm gonna fix that right up. Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today I'm gonna be putting as many videos as I can to teach you the pure awesomeness that is the setting of Eberron. Today's video is gonna go through time from the in-universe creation of the setting right up until modern history. Now, keep in mind that there have been a few changes to the setting over time as it's been updated for new additions, so expect some oversimplification as I try to hit as many plot details as I can, and leave a comment below for what you might want me to go in-depth about in the future. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So, in the beginning, there was nothing. Then there were these three primordial dragons that formed out of that nothing named Sybaris, Eberron, and Kyber. Sybaris and Kyber really didn't like each other because Sybaris represented goodliness and nicitude, and Kyber was an edgelord loner kid that only listened to fearless vampire killers. And their fighting eventually got so annoying that their moderate sibling Eberron said, Fuck it, we're being a planet now! And then they were. Sybaris became the ring around the planet, gained dominion over most of the planes of existence, and also spawned dragons. Kyber became what amounts to the Underdark, controlled the elemental and chaotic planes, and started creating other edgelord demons, and Eberron became, well, Eberron, the entire planet outside of the core. And so it gained the material plane, as well as Eberron's version of the Feywild and the Shadowfell. With the Dragon Vore finished and the world created, the only thing left to do was have creatures live on it. And thus, a bunch of other creatures were born, and they all got their own little slice of Dragon Ball to live on. There was Aranal, the land of elves that don't like to die, Argonessin, the land of seclusionist dragons that kill anyone who goes there, Frostfell and Everest, essentially the North and South Poles, Sarlona, the birthplace of humanity, Zendrik, the batshit crazy jungle land with giants and shit, and Corvair, the place where pretty much everything happens. When the world was first created, Corvair was being run by an empire of goblinoids called the Dakan, and things were good. There was mass murder, slaves everywhere, total peace times, up until some craziness happened that fucked everything up. A new plane, unconnected to any of the three dragons, popped into existence, and its name was Zoriat, the realm of madness. From Zoriat poured these assholes called the Delkir, which is Eberron speak for very very bad time. See, the Dalkir were these charismatic but completely mental alien flyboys that had a penchant for biological experimentation, creating a bevy of Lovecraftian monsters and nightmares, with the most impressive of them being, wait for it, the Elithids! Yep, that's right, in the world of Eberron, Mind Flayers were created by the Dalkir to do all the same things that Mind Flayers are known to do. Isn't that neat? So, with an army of alien creatures at their backs, the Dalkir immediately made like a band of adventurers and started their mass genocide of goblins. Of course, not expecting a goddamn alien invasion, the Dakan got each individual one of their goblin asses handed to them, and it started looking like the crazy Joker Dalkir boys were actually going to take over everything, when suddenly, out from the literal woodworks of Eberron popped druids! Indeed, a large sect of primarily orcish druids, known as the Gatekeeper Druids, said fuck no to all this nonsense that was happening around them, and they severed Zoriat from its connection with the Material Plane, and then banished the surviving Dalkir down into the deepest depths of Kyber, never to be played by Jared Leto again. In the aftermath of the war, the Dakan were left in shambles, and a once mighty and proud race of goblins decayed into the more wrecked recognizable form of roaming clans of savages and cutthroats. As the years went on, more and more races began to appear, and about 6,000 years after the Dalkir got bitch slapped by some druid wood, the entire continent of Corvair, which once again is the place where everything tends to happen, started to attract a great melting pot of races, with humans totaling about half of the entire population. After a while, more humans started to band together to work towards a common goal, and before they could even go down the tired D&D master list of racism and mass murder, the various groups of humanoid powers all came together and the continent became unified under one great human human nation known as Galifair. And then nothing bad ever happened after that at all, ever. Until it did. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this new type of video. I've never done a lore video before, so I hope it did a decent job at conveying information without being too confusing. As always, leave a like and comment if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to be a cool dude, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can slowly make my entire world revolve around D&D. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, I keep a link to my Discord and Twitter in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.